Good morning and welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking for the remains of the old St. Mary's College outside of Ellicott City. Uh, it was a college established by the Redemptorist Order in the late 1800s and uh, closed in the uh, early 1970s. So join me if you will and we will see if we can find the remains of St. Mary's College. Shortly after beginning my walk, I noticed several abandoned and collapsed houses that I eventually determined were support houses for an old factory situated along the river at the bottom of this hill, which had been demolished in 2013. I decided to take a detour and check out what was left of these old rundown buildings. This is the site of the former thistle mill, which operated from 1824 until a fire in 2003 caused it to shut its doors for good. It produced everything from cotton to car tires before eventually operating as a paper and cardboard mill for its last 75 years. Sitting vacant and being reclaimed by nature for a decade before being demolished, this would have made for a great exploration site had I come by a mere eight years sooner. Walking along the shoulder of this two-lane road, you would never think to check for a random staircase leading off into the woods, seemingly to nowhere. This, however, was on the edge of the former St. Mary's College campus, and where our search begins for what might remain. St. Mary's College opened in 1868 as the preparatory school for the Redemptorist Order of the Catholic Church. This site was chosen for the college as it was only 10 miles from the order's headquarters in Baltimore and had access to both a railway line as well as the Patapsco River. The college operated successfully until the mid 20th century when enrollment began to decline, resulting in the school being forced to close its doors in 1972, in large part due to the Redemptorists' relocation of their headquarters to Wisconsin. So now that we've gotten up to the general area, I am hoping to find what's called the Hell House Altar. So let's see what we can find. Armed only with the knowledge that the campus existed somewhere at the top of this hill, and that the large five-story building that made up the main crux of the college, along with the chapel, had been torn down several years after a fire ripped through them in the late 90s. I followed questionable dirt trails and climbed seemingly endless random staircases upward with the hope that I'd eventually run into a more structured path or sidewalk of some sort that would lead me in the direction of the former campus and hopefully whatever was left of the large altar that for some reason had been left standing. Well, that isn't an ominous sight to come across randomly wandering through the woods. I don't know what is. At some point, I began to notice signs that something used to exist in these woods, including this concrete foundation, which, from an old postcard I found, I can only speculate may have been the circled building that overlooked the Patapsco River and what would have been the Thistle Factory. I eventually found an old sidewalk I'm assuming was original to the campus. It connected to a more modern path likely installed by the local park service as a walking trail, since part of the former campus has now been incorporated into the nearby state park. 
Shortly down this path, I began to notice what I'm assuming is graffiti on the trees, as well as several stone structures, which I hoped meant that I was getting close to finding the altar. Alright, so like 18 times a charm and I think I'm at least coming up on something. Something that'll make this trek and this little exploration worthwhile. At last I discovered the one structure I was hoping had not been demolished. The large altar ominously standing alone in the woods, nicknamed the Hell House Altar. I'm unsure if this was part of the indoor structure of the chapel or if it was an outdoor altar, but it's clear either way that it didn't meet the same fate from the fires and general decay as the other buildings on campus. The Hell House nickname, originally given to the entire campus, originated from rumors about events that occurred at the college both during and after its closure. Everything from the campus being a secret site for satanic rituals to more outlandish rumors of a priest raping and hanging nuns. Given the ominous feel of the campus situated in and being reclaimed by nature, along with the now clearly coordinated black and white artwork, it makes sense why the Hell House nickname has persisted. Beyond the altar, I found only a few more items that appeared to be related to the college, including an old pool, the walls of which have been used as a canvas for a variety of graffiti, as well as an old water tank and what I think is an old VW van randomly decaying along the path. I wish I would have learned of this place years ago while any of the other buildings, including the old factory down the hill, were still standing. However, just being able to find the altar made the entire trek worth it. So I think with that, I'm going to head back. I'm going to call that it for today's video. If you enjoyed this, hit the like button. If you want to see more like it, hit the subscribe button. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right, bye. All right, back down the mountain we go.